Win, 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 win. Win, loss, win, win. Loss, loss, loss. Win, 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 loss. All right. This has been Eagle Eye. Uh, you got him with three straight losses. There is uh, there is, <laughs> there is some, some landmines in this schedule. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, we will. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Sangaro. The schedule's out. The schedule's out, and I might not be in the best frame of mind because I just watched the Sixers. I, I texted a friend of mine going into the fourth quarter saying, this is the Sixers' most important quarter in the last 20 years. <laughs> and they missed the, they missed their last seven shots. They got outscored 14-1. to one. I mean, Springer hit a shot at the end, but they, they basically – they might have just given the season away in that fourth quarter. That was rough. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, it was weird because the schedule came out during the middle of the game. So we said, well, let's, let's wait until after the game's over to do the pod. Maybe we should have just done it at eight o'clock. I mean, they're up, they're up 80, 83, 81 after Maxi hits the foul shots on the clear path. They, they didn't score again until the subs were in. I mean, it's just with six minutes left, they had it. Tough ass to go up there and win another game, but Celtics did it, so we'll see. I still think the Sixers are the better team, but sure didn't look like it at the at the end of this game. Yeah, you're right. All right, uh, yeah. schedule Not stuff. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of fun schedule stuff. Uh, we already knew their opponents, but it is fun. It's like the first sign that the season's actually going to happen. Like we see <laughs> what it looks like. Yeah, I think we kind of knew the season was going to happen. Yeah, we know every season's going to happen. But once you see the schedule, you can start to visualize it. You can, if you're fans, you can start to plan your trips, plan the games you want to go to. Uh, it is a lot of fun. It, it means the season is it's coming. It'll be here before you know it. Yeah. Uh, some big takeaways. What what are what are some of your takeaways when you look at the schedule as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that jumps out is just. Uh, well, I appreciate the bye week, uh, my birthday weekend. That's that's really that was very nice of the league to schedule it that way. It was nice uh, to Roger to ask you. He did. I, I don't think he was going to do it, but I did suggest it. Um, I mean, the thing that stands out is Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys in a row in a span of twenty eight days. Bills on a short week after a Monday night game at Arrowhead, and then the Bills home, 49ers home, and then at Dallas. I mean. All four of those teams, and then if you if you include Dallas before the bye, that's five straight games against teams that won thirteen or more games last year. And then you have at Seattle, where uh, you know they, I mean, they were uh, not a great team last year, but they were a playoff team. I think they were a nine and eight team, and that's always a tough place to play. So, from they better have a good record in the first half of the season because that is a murderer's row: Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, Niners. Cowboys, Seahawks. That that is going to be a tough stretch. That that yeah, it is. The nice thing here, though, and, and if if you're going to look at it at some of the positives, an opportunity to to get a hot start. You know, there are very winnable games at the beginning of this schedule. Now, you can say you'd rather have the easy games at the beginning or the end, whatever you look, however you you want to look at it, but. Uh, Definitely winnable games early in the schedule. And based on that murderer's row you just mentioned, you might want to make sure you take care of business in those early games because looking at the the schedule that comes, especially after the bye week, you're going to want a little bit of a cushion. Yeah, that eight no star from last year would come in handy this year because, uh, yeah, I mean, the first eight games look pretty manageable. I mean, the Vikings, um, you know, are always decent. Uh, they're, they're that's prime time Kirk Cousins, though. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, you know, first time they've opened at New England since 1944. They opened the season against the Boston Yanks okay. uh, at, at Fenway Park. Go ahead. Go no, ahead I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to do it this time. It's because you want me to. <laughs> no. So first time since 44, they're opening up in New England. Uh, but yeah, the, the first eight games look pretty manageable. Um, and, you know, I mean, Tampa at Tampa. But yeah, um, the bye week is going to come just in time to kind of brace yourself with, with, with what's going to follow. And, uh, you know, you finish with Giants, Cards, Giants, which you would think is manageable. I think the Giants got a little better, uh, but certainly three games that you kind of, I mean, they never lose. They just don't lose to the Giants. 
um, three games that look manageable. So it's just that one stretch. I mean, look, Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, Niners, Dallas, Seahawks, six games. You know, you hope to go three and three, honestly. But realistically, you, 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 if you go four and two, you're going to be the number one seed, I, I think. That's I'm going to say that right now. If you go four and two in that stretch, uh, you're going to be the number one seed in the conference. If um, if you go three and three, you, you might be. But if you go worse than that, that's, you know, because that's, that is a tough stretch, and it's going to, you know, if, if you lose a couple of games in there, it's going to give other teams a chance to to catch up in the, in the division and the conference, especially with both Dallas games in that st- kind of starting and ending that stretch or almost ending it. So uh, that is, man, you got to be healthy when you get there. You got to be confident. And I guess the one good thing is that the first half of the season gives you a chance to get used to your new coordinators and new players to. That wasn't really a problem last year. All the new players played great right from the get-go, but um, it's going to give this chance, this team a chance to to come together the first half of the season and be as ready as possible for that that stretch. Uh, before we get to the game-by-game game look at this, just a few notes on the schedule. Uh, Eagles play on Christmas Day this year. That'll be a fun game. Uh, five primetime games on this schedule. What primetime games and one o'clock games? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I was going to get to that. Just three one o'clock games, which right. uh, I very selfishly hate. Um, yeah. uh, one o'clock games are great. Uh, and only three of them is pretty wild. Uh, in terms of strength of schedule, uh, if you're doing it the traditional way, the Eagles have the toughest strength of schedule in the league when you look at Last year's results, uh, their opponents had a 566 winning percentage last year. But if you look at it in terms of Vegas over-under numbers, it's middle of the pack, 17th toughest schedule uh, per Warren Sharp. So I think that's, you know, that's kind of a better way to look sure. at this. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, um, the other way is still valid and, and is still worth looking at. All right, you want to go game by game here? Yeah, let's do it. Week one. And we'll, we'll talk about the preseason in a little bit. But week one, September 10th, at New England, they're honoring Tom Brady before that game. What do you think about this one? It's uh, it's kind of weird to start on the road against an AFC team. Yeah, I think they did it um, in Houston, like in 06. I think there was one since then in Cleveland in 2012. Is that Brandon Weeding uh, threw four picks. I think Kirk Coleman had three of them, uh, and uh, it was Vic. Vic threw like three or four, and the Eagles won that game. Uh, Andy's last opening day, but uh, yeah, it doesn't happen often. Um, like I said, first time they're opening a season in New England since 1944. Uh, you know, the if it was a few years ago, you'd be like, oh, "That's a tough ask," but they're not. They're not the same team. Obviously, Brady will be there, but won't be in uniform, as far as we know. Um, so that would really change this game. <laughs> <laughs> it really would. Oh, like, like, get that jersey out of the rafters and put it on me. They have rafters in outdoor stadiums. I don't know. I don't think so. But anyway, it's a it's a winnable game. Uh, yeah, you're on the road for the opener, but I feel like it's a game that they should win. I think they're favored right now by three and a half, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a winnable game. Uh, honestly, maybe the line's a little closer than it should be. We'll see what happens. A long way to go before that game. Uh, and this is we're, – we're doing a, a story on the site for Friday about our favorite um, places to visit. So this is a road trip. Uh, what would you have for uh, for this trip, whether it's I went with the or wherever? Yeah, I know you probably went with the zoo up there with Foles the goat, but uh, I did not. I went with the Boston Heritage Trail, which is a really cool um, collection of historical. It's like a two two and a half mile uh, trail around downtown Boston that hits uh, almost all the the best historic sites: Paul Revere House, Faneuil Hall, uh, the old Massachusetts State House, all that stuff. Um, so much history in that city, and maybe more history than in Foxborough. So I. I went a little bit northeast of Foxborough and went to Boston. Yeah, the the, the Patriots is always a weird one because you can kind of choose to stay in the middle of nowhere. You can stay in Boston or you can go to Providence, uh, Rhode Island, which is what I'm writing about. Uh, I like Providence. We were there a few years ago. 
yeah. Brown campus there, RISD campus there. Uh, cool old buildings and a nice little town to walk around. And if you don't want to deal with Boston and uh, the hectic nature of that city. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I just jump on Amtrak and take it right into downtown Providence. You can walk to the hotel. Not bad. Uh, and then I just walk back then Monday morning, right on the train. You love it. Um, how about that hill in Providence that goes up to. Yeah. Up I mean, to, the problem with doing it that you got to get to the game. Yeah. Well, that's why I just get a ride with you, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't do that anymore because I'm doing pregame post game. So uh, I'll drive myself to that. But yeah, I, I love, well, my brother, he lives outside Boston and um, been going up there for a long, long time. Red Sox games. He was a season ticket holder for a long time, uh, Red Sox. Yeah, I haven't uh, looked to see if the Red Sox are in town. It's an early game. If they are, that'd be fun. Yeah, a uh, little trivia. The first Eagles game I ever covered on the road was, was at Fenway the, Park. Was the 1987 um, Eagles win overtime um, over over the Patriots at the old Schaefer Stadium or Sullivan Stadium, whatever they called it that year. Um, both teams missed a field goal in overtime. Um it's Tony Franklin was the Patriots kicker, the former Eagles kicker. Paul McFadden was the Eagles kicker. And uh, the Eagles won it. Um, Tom Ramsey set a record for most passing yards ever against the Eagles. That, I believe, was broken a few times since then. But that was my first game ever. It was like 43-41. Or I guess it wouldn't be two points if it was an overtime, but it wasn't decided by safety. But it was like 37-34. Eagles won it. And, that was, uh, and then that game and the Chip Kelly game when Belichick gave Chip a present, was that in 2014? Those are the only games 15. the Eagles have ever won at New England, except that game in 44. They, they won that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, week two. Uh, short week. You know, if you have to play a Thursday night game, at least you're still, I guess, kind of fresh. You haven't gotten into the meat of the season. You haven't been playing games for – Tough you know, for a uh, road game and then a, and then a Thursday game. Yeah, it's, it's a little tricky – uh, I, I don't think it's the worst thing when it happens this early in the season. Uh, so you come home, you play the Vikings on Thursday night football. Uh, Kurt Coleman turns into a pumpkin every primetime game. So that's a nice bonus. So does Kurt Cousins. Who did I say? You said Kurt Coleman. Did I? That's two references to Kurt Coleman. Maybe that's what it was still in my mind. I was like, I can't believe you brought up Kurt Coleman. Uh, Kurt Cousins. Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> At least I brought it up in context. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, since uh, in the last 50 years, only three Vikings quarterbacks have won a game in Philadelphia Wade Wilson, Kirk Cousins, and Joe Webb. So there's a little, there's a little trivia for you. The Vikings never win in Philadelphia. So, um, and look, I mean, that's that's you know, that's a tough game. I mean, look, they're they're not a postseason threat, and the Eagles took care of them handily last year. It was a it ended up being a really huge game for them. Um, as far as postseason implications, that, that head-to-head was like was like a really important thing um, going down the stretch. But uh, it did win 13 games last year. But it's not a game that you look at and say, "Oh, that's going to be yeah, gonna be rough." They won 13 games last year. A little bit of smoke and mirrors. We sure. saw them get uh, taken out by the Giants in the wild card round. Uh, yeah, but they're they're not a pushover yeah. team either, right? Right. I like the Eagles' chances in that one. And, yeah, and yeah, well, go ahead. No, that's all I have for the Vikings game. I was just going to say, then you have – the timing works out because you, you have a mini buy. You don't play until the following Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have that, and then you have the bye week is kind of in a better place this year than it was last year. So um, from that standpoint, if you can get through uh, the short week, you know, the, the payoff is having a – a mini buy going into uh, Tampa. Yeah. All right. So then uh, week three, they go to Tampa. Like you mentioned, they have an, the extra time, which is nice. Uh, the Buccaneers are a team in transition right now uh, to put it nicely. I don't think they have a great roster. You're on the road. So you never know. Uh, this feels like a win. I mean, this feels like it's lining up to, to be a decent start to the season. Yeah, uh, Eagles have lost four straight against Tampa, but obviously those were different Tampa teams. Um, you know, the Bucks seem to have the Eagles' number in a lot of ways uh, in some pretty important games, um, but it's not the same Buccaneers team, so you kind of like the Eagles' chances in this one. Um, the second of five primetime games on the schedule. Yeah, five. I mean, that's the max, and they, they get the max every year. Every year. 
every year, just about. Um, even the lean years, I mean, it seems like there are two teams this year don't have any primetime games. So uh, Eagles getting five is still significant. Uh, Tampa Bay won the NFC South last year, 89 record. Someone had to win it. Uh, that's an ugly division. This year, I think the Saints are favored to win that one. Uh, and I think the Bucks just aren't a great team. Yeah, I'm with you there. Okay. Uh, week four, they come home. Oh, we should do a uh, a travel spot in Tampa. Oh, Tampa. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. For me, it's Clearwater Beach. I mean, it's an obvious one, but um, I, I really like it there. I'm not a big, big beach guy, but Clearwater Beach offers so much more. That whole area, um, it's just really, really nice. The Phillies are there in Clearwater. Um, you take the causeway over from Tampa – right from the airport and the stadium, the Philly stadium is right there on the right. Obviously spring training won't be going on. Um, the, uh, the Phillies single a team is there too. The threshers um, they'll be done, but it's a nice area. Um, you got to go to Frenchies. Frenchies is like it. And there's something about Clearwater beach, like because there's so many Phillies fans and Philly people go there. Like the restaurants all have like a Philly oriented menus and uh, photos of Philadelphia sports stuff on the walls. It's kind of cool. Um, it's like a little pocket of Philadelphia in uh, in the Gulf Coast of Florida. So it's just a, a nice a nice beach. Um, nice. We, we went to the uh, Dolly Museum in St. Petersburg, I think, a few years ago, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Uh, Salvador Dolly Museum is is great. It's a little, you know, maybe. 20, 25 minute drive from, from Tampa, but uh, it's a nice area. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Gulf coast more than, more than the Pacific coast. I like it there. The Pacific coast, the Atlantic coast. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Manhattan beach. You You're going to get me for saying Kirk Coleman. I'm going to get you for the wrong coastline there. Uh, <laughs> Kirk Coleman played college football on the Olin Tangy coast. Uh, yeah. I like Clearwater. Last time I went to Clearwater, I stopped the Frenchies and I was walking along the beach uh, there was a red tide. You ever see the red tide? No. All these dead fish washing up on on the beach. I, I saw a little kid do a, a 10-foot running jump onto a dead fish on the beach and thought, all right, this is enough for me. I'm going to gonna take off out of here. But the, the Dolly Museum is incredible. We went there a few years ago. That's what I wrote about it. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, it's one of those uh, places where you, you just like – you can look at one painting for an hour and just let it play tricks on your mind. Uh, yeah. Fun time. Yeah. It's great. All right. Week four, come home, play the commanders on October 1st, a one o'clock game. Joy, joy, joy there. Uh, <laughs> commanders, you know, I mean, Sam Howell comes to town and it's always going to strike fear into you. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have a different quarterback every time, every time they play the Eagles. Um, really, uh, the Eagles have problems with with Washington. They're four and they four. They're, what's that? They do. They, they, look, they're, they're coached pretty well. They're, they give the Eagles a tough time. Yeah, um, Eagles are four and four in their last eight home games against Washington. We all know uh, what happened uh, last year. Uh, it's kind of a weird game. A game they shouldn't have lost, but they they bounce back from it. But uh, Washington just gives them trouble, and um, it, it's funny that. The last Washington quarterback who beat the Eagles in Philadelphia in more than one season was Joe Theismann. I mean, they just, you know, they have a different QB every year. Uh, it didn't work out last year with the guy in Indy. And uh, we'll see how it goes this year. But they're they're just always – they always just seem to play better than you expect them to when they play the Eagles. Yeah. All right. So then after that, on the road again, this is a long road trip out to Los Angeles to face the Rams – I am looking forward to seeing that new stadium for the first time. The Rams stink. Yeah, Rams stink. I um, mean, you, you look at their raw. Uh, they are sneakily in contention to be the worst team in the league based on the roster. And it's crazy because they won the Super Bowl just a couple of years ago. Um, won just five games last year. It's it you know just it shows you how tricky it is to to stay good. Uh, when you when you when you win a Super Bowl, and I, you know, I mean, they weren't thinking about long term when they, they went for it. I, I give them credit; they were basically f them picks, and they they yeah. went after it, and now they're, they're paying, paying the for price. It. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The the Eagles have played the Rams twice out there since uh, they moved back uh, from uh, St. Louis, and, and both in the LA Coliseum, 
Uh, Eagles won both those games in 17 and 18. We know about the 17 game, but uh, yeah, that stadium is is pretty wild looking. Uh, uh, I'm sorry I won't be there because I'd, I'd really like to see that place. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, as far as the game goes, I mean, you never know, but that that's the game the Eagles should have. And, and if you're looking at the schedule, you're thinking, okay, really good chance to start off strong here. Yep. Um, it's a another winnable game. And, I, again, the, the first half of the season looks like it's it's pretty – Pretty navig- navigable, navigable. Pretty, not not too. Uh, Is navigable like no, to layman like? I think it's navigable. Navigable. I think you need another <laughs> syllable. No. Yeah, it's too many syllables. It's too many syllables. Navigable. navigable. Anyway, where, where do you like going in LA? Uh, a few places. The the one I, I listed this time was La Brea Tar Pits. Have you ever been there? No, you told me about it. Yeah. It's fascinating. This was actually a place Gunner told me about. Um, really cool. Basically, it they're like these tar pits, like um, where they found fossils and bones of prehistoric animals, like mammoths and and uh, wolves, dire wolves, and and dinosaurs. And they're still excavating there. Like they still have active tar pits. That you can kind of peek in and see what they're working on. But then the museum inside. Uh, all the skulls and and bones and, and you can take a tour which i did and man my tour guide was probably so tired of me and how many questions i asked but it's a really cool place a lot of grateful dead references in that one um dire wolf grateful dead song skull 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 and bones skull and roses uh interesting subliminal grateful dead references there um back uh, <laughs> back on topic um you know, it's a good place to go in LA is a restaurant in a tent. <laughs> we, all, we all stayed at a hotel in Manhattan beach that had, they were renovating it and the restaurant was closed. So they, they built a restaurant in a giant tent in the parking lot. And we, we ate there a couple of times, but. Uh, the amazing like, thing about that, by the way, was that was in what? 2017. Yeah. They were so far ahead. Like we all got That's used right. to eating in tents during COVID. That's they right. were like, they, they were, were pioneers of the they were ahead of their time they 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 invented eating they invented eating out <laughs> outside um during pre-covid but um i really like manhattan beach we we hung out down there a little bit um what when uh, uh when the eagles were out there um it's just a cool little beach town and um i really like the fact that the beach itself like there's no commercial there's no stores there's no restaurants there's no bars along the beach it's just like these little homes and there's there's a boardwalk, but there's there's like no commercial. So it's really quiet. Um, a lot of surfing, a lot of volleyball courts up and down the whole beach. Um, you know, you see like like people in LA are really fit. You see a lot of you know um, inline skaters and skateboarders and runners and cyclists and uh, along the beach. And yeah, Manhattan Beach is is that's that's two beaches I've got on here, and I'm not even a beach guy, but. Um, and of course, there's the kettle. I mentioned the kettle, 24 hour. I don't know if it's a bar or a diner or a combination. Um, a diner. It, it's a uh, yeah. It's um, it's right on the main corner in town, and the main street turns into this like 900 foot like um, what would you call it? just like this dock that goes out into the jetty, jetty into the into the water. You can walk out. It's really cool. And uh, that's where we ran to Joe Douglas, but we didn't know it was him until the next day. I said, Joe, were you in Manhattan Beach? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and where all the Inquirer guys climbed over a wall to get into the bar. Was, that was kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and you can, you know, you can, it's a great place to run a bicycle and, and just ride around. It's a park. There's a big park between the downtown area and the, and the beach. And my favorite coffee shop, uh, the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Is in Manhattan Beach. You're lying to me. You told me you have a different favorite coffee shop. No, well, yeah, the one in Bellingham is my favorite individual coffee shop, but Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf is my favorite chain. All right, week six. These distinctions are important, Dave. Week six, uh, Eagles kind of come home, but then they're on the road a little bit uh, at MetLife to face the Jets. First of two trips to MetLife, and only two trips to MetLife. Interesting. No preseason game with the Jets this year. 
pretty First crazy. Time, like since '93, I think. Yeah, very strange. Uh, playing the Ravens instead, and the Ravens care about that preseason, so that's not going to be an easy one. That's a tough game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but week six at the, the Jets, record for consecutive preseason wins. We know the Eagles' history against the Jets. These Jets are not those Jets. This is a good team, and they have a Hall of Fame quarterback now. Who knows what it'll look like in week six, but this is not a pushover game that you used to see against the Jets. So they can't run Gardner Minshew out there and beat him? They cannot. Uh, Eagles 12-0 and against the Jets. It's the best record any team in the NFL has against another team. 6-0 and up in uh, East Rutherford, 2-0 uh, and at MetLife. Um yeah, I mean, this is one of the Jets' better teams. You know, we'll see, um, we'll see what Aaron Rodgers has left, but certainly better than some of the guys they've run out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's it, that should be a fun game too. The Jets have some some star power. I mean, they have a good defense. They have uh, obviously Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson. They they have some weapons on that side of the football too. So Aaron Rodgers uh, throwing to Garrett Wilson is interesting, and also the Eagles are going to come back from a coast to coast trip. Yeah. And going yeah. back on the road, and that's uh, that's not easy to do. Not easy. Yeah, for the first six games on the road, I know the Jets is just a drive, but uh, as easy as this opening part of the schedule is, that part of it isn't easy, being on the road four of six. Right, right. That's, uh, that's a sneaky, tough game right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, uh, did you put uh, – I know you had something for – Oh, for East Rutherford? Well, I went about seven miles east to – Weehawken in Hudson County, which was the site of the um, 1804 duel between Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. Um, it's now a historic, you know, there's a park and a big display about the duel. A really interesting to me, really, really fascinating uh, moment in history, uh, a sitting vice president dueling uh, a former secretary of treasury um, and there was apparently it was apparently a very, very well known place for duels to be to be held, and it was the the park is not exactly at the spot where the duels were because that's apparently inaccessible from the New Jersey side. You have to take a they both Burr and Hamilton both took rowboats across from from Lower Manhattan across the Hudson River to the this point where they could duel. It was actually in New Jersey, but you can't get there. So, uh, but there's a lot of historical stuff about the duel and how it came to be, and um, uh, you know, obviously uh, didn't go too well for Alexander Hamilton. Uh, but uh, fascinating, just the fact that a vice president and a secretary of treasury would would shoot guns at each other, just in honor, you know, out of you know, to defend their honor. Um, Things, now, things. were you uh, were you traveling then? Did you cover that one, or did you let your partner on the beat take? Uh, you just, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm, gonna... I, yeah. I, I'm not going to do it when you want me to do it. Yeah, we didn't. We, I'm still waiting for the transcript from uh, <laughs> from Aaron Burr. It is crazy. I guess like guns weren't as. Uh, this is me having no idea how this worked. I guess guns weren't as accurate then. Like you didn't know what you're going to get, so it's like kind of a. It was pretty accurate. Um, but apparently there was a thing where um, you would, the, the real honor was in accepting it. And a lot of times the two, the two figures would like, they would march, they would walk off the, you know, the, whatever the distance was, and then they would turn around and agree to discuss their differences. And most duels did not end in actual, you know, gun, gunfire. Who do you think would win in that duel, Aaron Rodgers or Jalen Hurts? Who would <laughs> Jalen Hurts? Okay. What kind of question is that? But if it was dark out, Aaron Rodgers be prepared for it. He does well in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I could talk about the duel forever, but it's a it's a really fascinating little nugget in American history, and it's right there in North Jersey. Yeah. Right near I- right near the stadium yeah i didn't give any tips for that one i said get up there and get back (laughs) watch out for lightning don't mess about just get in there watch the game get back in your car and drive home well you know you can find the 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 childhood home of reuben frank in teaneck it's only about six miles from the stadium if you want to you know go out to oak dean avenue in teaneck new jersey on the historic register there (laughs) 
Right. We actually had, there was a lot of duels in my front yard back then. Uh, week seven, Eagles come back home, face the Dolphins. Uh, this is a night game, another, uh, this is a Sunday night football game, 820 against the Dolphins. Not an easy one. Dolphins have some firepower. We don't look. Uh, if, if Tua is healthy, which is a big if, that's a decent team. Yeah. Yeah, they were a playoff team. Still haven't won a playoff game since 2000 when uh, – when um, Jay Fiedler was their quarterback, former Eagle. Uh, but uh, they're not bad. Yeah, they're okay. But at, you kind of, you know, a, a night game at the link against the Dolphins. I mean, the Eagles are not going to lose that game. Yeah, maybe not. Um, but if, if the way I'm looking at it, it's like I, I kind of had the feeling last year and they went on this crazy win streak. It's like they got to lose one of these games. Yeah. Or at yeah. a certain point. Yeah. All right. But next one, fun. week eight. At the Commanders, you get a one of our last trips, hopefully, to FedEx Field. <laughs> Lovely FedEx Field. Uh, yeah, we talked about the Commanders already, but a uh, tough team, and you got to go down there and play. Yeah. Um, interesting to note that the Eagles have won more games at FedEx Field than they won in 36 years at RFK Stadium. <laughs> they were, they're 16-7. and seven. Uh, in their last 23 games, 16 and 10 overall in, in Landover. And they were 12 and 21 uh, in the 36 years that RFK was open. So that's that's kind of interesting. It seems like the Eagles do better at FedEx than they do against the um, the commanders at home. They just they always win at FedEx Field. Um, but it's a tougher game at home. Last year kind of was an example of that. But, uh, yeah, look – You'd like to see him sweep Washington, so I, I'm going to give him a W there. Okay, and we'll go through wins and losses in a little bit. But yeah, a rare, a rare one o'clock, second of three. Yeah, second of three. Enjoy that one. Who, who knows? Maybe four. Maybe four. We'll see about week 18. We don't have uh, that's all to be determined. So right. hopefully that game won't matter, and we can get a one o'clock <laughs> the Giants in week 18. That'd be nice. All right. What do you got next? All right. Uh, following the week. Dallas Cowboys at home, 425 before the bye week in week nine. Eagles are 7-11 uh, and 11 in their last 18 games against Dallas at home. They've won seven of their last 18 home games against the Cowboys. They've been a problem. Uh, and, you know, they're not going away. They're a talented team. Um, Dak has the highest pass rating ever at the link, higher than any Eagles quarterback. They've only beaten them once in Philly. They've never picked them off in Philly. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's like a mental thing. I mean, look, he's a good quarterback, but he's not that good. Um, so you'd like to see them. And, again, they haven't swept the Cowboys since 2011. Um, you'd like to see them. You know, and they managed last year to, to get to the Super Bowl and win the NFC um, despite, uh, you know, losing – the one game they played against Dak, they beat Cooper Rush in the other one. But you'd like to see him sweep this team, and uh, it would it would go a long way toward helping them get that top seed in the conference. It would. I mean, it, it, Dallas is giving them tr- – Dallas is a really good team. You know, it, it's – all the talk in the NFC is about the Eagles and the 49ers. I think the Cowboys belong in that conversation. I think you're right. I think you're right. And again, no team has won the NFC East back to back years since Eagles in 03 and 04, which is crazy. It's been almost 20 years. Um, I'm sure I'm, it's not going to be easy to do it. And if you don't win a division, your chances of doing much in the postseason are, are slim. And then a week 10 bye week. I think that's a pretty, pretty solid time for the bye week. We've seen some really early, we've seen some too late. Week 10 feels like a good spot. Yeah, especially you got that mini buy uh, after the Thursday night game, and, and then the buy comes in uh, in the middle of November. Um, you won't see me for about a week. I'm going to be celebrating my birthday. Like I might go to the islands. <laughs> I don't know what islands, but, uh, but yeah, it's a good it's good timing, especially with the the, the way the next few games look uh, after the buy. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second because they are about to run into an absolute murderer's row. There. Catch all the sports action and more at Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Whether it's the money line or the pass line, there's something for everyone in a great sports book. Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Philly loves a winner. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 
Rube, we mentioned it. Uh, it gets tough. I mean, this is where the schedule really picks up. And you can say it picks up with that Cowboys game uh, before the bye. But now at Kansas City, against the Bills, against the 49ers, at Dallas, at Seattle, this is this is the toughest part of the schedule. I mean, this has got to be the toughest part of anyone's schedule. I don't remember. I, I Well, I mean, 17-game season, so teams have more wins, but – Four straight games against thirteen win teams. Five straight, if you you know, five four straight weeks, five straight games. Uh, I'm I'm willing to say that's never happened. <laughs> I just it's impossible. Um, it is, and look, you never know year to year. I mean, the team. Look at the Rams. I mean, they won five games the year after uh, winning the Super Bowl. So you, you never know when a team's going to take a big, you know, somebody a quarterback gets hurt, anything can happen. But yeah, it looks it looks brutal, honestly. It does. Uh, Starting with the Chiefs, you have a bye week to prepare for them. That's nice. Yeah. um, You know what's crazy? The last seven Eagles-Chiefs games, Andy Reid is the winning coach in all seven. (laughs) Three Eagles beating the Chiefs, and then since he got to KC, the Chiefs beating the Eagles four straight. So um, kind of a weird thing. Um, Eagles haven't beaten – the Chiefs since uh, 2009, Kevin Cobb threw for 327 yards. Um, they're really, really good. Um, they don't lose much at home. They don't lose much anywhere. Uh, Monday night in Arrowhead, uh, the hype level is going to be off the charts. I think the Eagles will play well. I, I think they'll kind of thrive on the adversity and the atmosphere. Um, and if they can win that game – you know, that'll be that'll be huge, but it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, that'll be – obviously, it's a lot of fun. The Super Bowl rematch, the second of their Super Bowl rematches, even though that the Patriots aren't exactly the same team they played right. several years ago. That Chiefs team is, and they still have Patrick Mahomes, they still have Andy Reid. Uh, tough game, Monday Night Football. But, man, that's, that's the one you circle and think. That's going to be a great game. And More the field harder. shouldn't be uh, an ice rink, which is nice. Yeah, that'll help. More more fodder for the uh, Kelsey's podcast, too. Eagles haven't won in KC since 05. Uh, Donovan had a big game through a touchdown to T.O. and went to Mike Bartram. <laughs> so uh, that'll be, it'll be a great atmosphere. It's going to be a lot of fun. What do you like about KC? You know, I went with the uh, Westport District, which is um, – you know, they have, like, the downtown, like, super express, like – you know, bars and clubs, but Westport's more like, um, that's more touristy. Westport is um, less gentrified. Uh, You're talking just, about the uh, downtown, uh, the Power and Light District. I yeah, think. Power and Light District. Um, and, you know, there's some there's some fun places there. There's a Bar Louie right, right across. I, I covered uh, Villanova and LaSalle in, in the NCAA tournament there one year. The Power and, and Light I, District is like Xfinity Live on steroids. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um but it's also more it's, – it's right downtown where Xfinity is basically just for the, the sports complex. But um, Westport's more like where the locals would go. I guess it's kind of like what would you compare it to here? Um, not even, like More like um, uh, Northern Liberties or Manioc or something. Um, just a lot of really cool restaurants. And, you know, they're, they're not chains. They're restaurants and, and bars and, you know, cool bookstores and record stores and music venues, coffee shops. It's it's a nice nice area. It's south of uh, south of downtown KC Westport. It's nice. I went with uh, KC Barbecue. There's a bunch of different places. It's kind of like people with their cheesesteak spots in Philly. Everyone's got a favorite, and they'll tell you this place is better. This place is better. Go try a few of them while you're there. The nice thing about barbecue, like it'd be tough to do that with cheesesteaks. Is like how many cheesesteaks? <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can kind of do that with barbecue. You can go on your little yeah. barbecue tour. You can try a few different things from a few different places. Um, the last time we were in Kansas City, uh, one of the more impressive feats I've ever seen, it was Gunner and Clark and two photogs. I forget. I think it was Jerry and Tommy. Man, they did they did a crazy barbecue tour. I did not go on all the tour with them. And I did meet up with them, I think, after the game, actually, at Gates Barbecue. Uh, has a few spots. It's one of my favorite spots, but there's there's a bunch down there that are great. And we all got our platters. We all ate. And John Clark did one of the more impressive things I've ever seen. Ate a full meal. Went. You know what? 
I'm going to go get a turkey sandwich. <laughs> Went back in line, got a roast turkey, like a barbecue turkey sandwich and ate that thing. I, I was, it was, it was, I tipped my cat to him on that. Clarky. Clarky. Uh, side note, if your barbecue comes with a couple of slices of white bread, they're serious. They're either doing it right or they think they're doing it right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Next, uh, they're coming home for a couple of games. That's the good news. Well, the bad <laughs> news is this is against the Bills and the 49ers, two of the best teams from each conference. Yeah, Sean McDermott comes back to Philly. Uh, Josh Allen. Uh, Bills haven't won in Philly since uh, – Jim Kelly was their quarterback, but this is a really, really good team. Um, last year was just kind of crazy with everything going on. They, they only played 16 games. Um, they're really, really good. I guess, I mean, really, they've underachieved. Um, they've been so good every year. They win 12, 13 games every year, but haven't gotten to a Super Bowl. And, um, you know, the AFC is the, – the road is a little harder in the AFC – uh, but they're they're really really talented. You know, it'll be fun to see Josh Allen against Jalen Hurts for the first time. They're two guys that started out as you know they're they're so inaccurate and they'd never amount to anything and they'd never be consistent passers and they're just runners. And look at them now; they're both uh, MVP candidates. Uh, they're going to be year in year out, so it's going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, and the fun thing about Kansas City and the Bills back to back is you know everyone talks about the AFC how much better of a conference it is. Eagles can, if they stand toe to toe with those two teams back to back, even if they don't win both of them, you're going, okay. Yeah. They're like an AFC team that's in the NFC, really. Use that line on Huddle the other day. Did I? Yeah, you did. It's good luck. Sometimes. Yeah. You have to. Um, I mean, we just don't have that many things to say. So you have (laughs) to keep using the same ones. Uh, But yeah, it's true. It does seem that way. Yeah. the, I mean, all the best teams are in the AFC, plus the Eagles and maybe the Niners. So uh, they have them all in a row. I mean, that's crazy to go to go Chiefs, Bills, Niners. I mean, even take Dallas out of the equation. I mean, I think if you asked 100 people who were the four best teams in the NFL, 90 would tell you the Bills, Chiefs, Niners, and Eagles. You might, you might get some Bengals in there. Bengals, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, it's it's a – I mean, it's going to be like three straight Super Bowls. And it's going to be physically really demanding. I mean, that, you know, the Chiefs game is a Monday, so the Bills game is a is a short week. Um, you know, and it's it's a Monday uh in in uh in Missouri. So you you know, you got travel. Uh it, I don't I just can't imagine Eagles ever had I'll probably look this up. I can't imagine they ever had a more challenging three-game stretch in their history uh, than those three games. Do you ever think Kansas wants to, like, mount an offensive and take back Kansas City? Uh, well, interesting thing. there. West, speaking of Westport, Westport was the site of um, a pivotal battle, the Civil War. Um, it, was, it was called the Gettysburg of the Midwest. Um I don't want to get too much into into it, but it just since you mentioned you mentioned that it was uh, it was a huge huge uh, win for the Union um, over the Confederate Army. So, uh, but yeah, what was the question? <laughs> you, you don't think of you know Kansas City, but you know um, that Westport area is actually just like half a mile from uh, the Kansas border. Yeah, Kansas City. There's also Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. Uh, which is adjacent to Kansas City, Missouri. And they have to feel completely gypped. There's a hospital. The uh, University of Kansas hospital is in both states. But anyway, we're talking about um, the Bills. Um, yeah, or the Niners, whichever one we're talking about. Uh, it's 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 a it's a brutal brutal stretch, and we'll learn a lot about this team those those 21 days. All right. Uh, now we're back on the rails here. Yeah. You, you can't take us off the rails and then bring us back. Tried. Yeah. Uh, 49ers. Hopefully they have a, a functioning quarterback for that game, maybe five or six on the roster. They can prepare for that one. Uh, I have never seen a team whine 
to the level we've seen the 49ers whine about that NFC championship game. It's it's really it's really bad. And you know, the Eagles had every opportunity to do the same about the field in uh in Glendale. And you know, after the game they said, you know, the field was really tough and it, the game shouldn't have been played on that field, but that was the end of it. And nobody said we lost because of the field. They just said it's an unfortunate we had that field. The Niners and the thing the crazy thing about it is you know, if Brock Purdy got knocked out of the game because they didn't protect him because they had a third string tight end blocking Hassan Reddick. Like it, it's not like he got hurt in some fluke accident. Like, you know, the drone camera hit him on the arm flying down from, you know, I, I mean, he got hit in playing football. He got hurt playing football. And the other guy, Josh Johnson too, got hurt because they can't protect. And then they're crying about the rules and oh, there should be more quarterbacks. I, I mean, it was really, it was, it was really disappointing because they're a great team and he's a good coach. Um, but you lost the game because the Eagles were the better football team. Period. That's why you lost the game. Well, what are the Eagles supposed to do? Not rush the quarterback? Yeah. Uh, it was, yeah. It's just constant whining about it. Um, really unbecoming of a professional football franchise. And. You know, now they got Javon Hargrave, so we'll see if he – we'll see what, what, what side he takes in that one. He might uh, be starting a quarterback in that one. He might be. I wonder – I mean, yeah, I mean, by then, you know, you would think uh, – well, who knows? Who knows who their quarterback would be? Yeah, I mean, the, all indications are it's going to be Purdy, but, you know, he was I, – I, I'm less sold on Brock Purdy than it seems like they are. He's pretty good. Pretty good. This is not intentional. That was not intentional. I swear. Um, I think he's. I think he's got a chance to be a top ten quarterback. I think he's. He's so accurate. He's smart. Uh, but look, he's only. He's only won like what five six games. So let's see. And they. They got Trey Lance too. So, be interesting. They'll all be. All hands on deck for that one. I'm sure. Yeah, they're they're kind of reaching. Matt Nagy field goal obsession after the double doink territory. I don't know. That was, that was, I mean, he had tryout kickers kicking from the same spot that, that uh, Cody Parkey missed. That see, like, yeah. Maybe not to that level because that was kind of a sillier thing, but the, the, the amount of time they've spent talking about this. Yeah. And I, I really do think it informed the way the Eagles talked about the Super Bowl. I think you're they saw right. how the 49ers were coming off. I'm like, we can't do that. They look yeah. like weenies. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was surprising. It was disappointing. Um, Cause that's a great franchise. Look, I mean, that, you know, that's, that's the franchise of Joe Montana and they're acting like that. It was, it was, it was sad to see. Yeah. All right. Next one doesn't get any easier. Heading down to the spaceship down in Jerry world at Dallas Sunday night football. No surprise there. It seems like, Whenever they play in Dallas, it's Sunday Night Football. That's going to be another good one. Yeah, Eagles have lost five straight uh, at AT AT&T Stadium. Um, The last time they won there was 17. Uh, Carson uh, threw three touchdowns, and uh, Ronald Darby, uh, Rodney McLeod, and Malcolm all picked off Dak Prescott. Uh, Eagles, remember Eagles were down 9-7 at halftime, and they won (laughs) 37-9. They just played like a perfect second half. Um, and they get killed when they go down there. I mean, the one game you know, like was meaningless, but they've given up an average of 37 points the last dur- during the five game losing streak in that stadium. Um, so yeah, you'd like to see them, you know, hold serve in, in Dallas. It's been just a really, really tough place for them to to play, and got to find a way to win there. Yeah, got to be Dallas. You know. If- we're looking at the schedule and like, yeah, it's pretty tough. You don't beat Dallas. It's going to be tough to win the division. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, just like they're like this roadblock. I, I, I have more confidence in the Eagles beating the Chiefs, the Bills, the 49ers, and Dallas just because they've – and I think part of it's just a mental thing. Even though different players every year, um, it just seems like they're never at their best when they play the Cowboys. And um, they've got to find a way to to reverse that. 
Uh, what was your spot in Dallas? Oh, I went with the Reunion Tower. Have you ever gone up there? I have, yeah, downtown. Yeah, it's downtown. It's right by Dealey Plaza. Um, yeah, just great views. And the restaurant just reopened. It had been closed. There's a restaurant top level. Um, it had been closed since COVID, so it just reopened. Um, so you can kind of just have dinner up there. The views are incredible. Or you just go up and, um, you know, you can see – uh, you can see really far from there, but it's it's a really cool. It's it's no space needle, but it, and I could. Did either of us go space needle? Did you go space needle? I didn't. No. Yeah, space needles is really cool, but uh, yeah, Reunion Towers is uh, is awesome. It is cool. Uh, I went with a little drive from Dallas. Not, I I think last year I wrote about um, Sixth Floor Museum, which is really cool. If you haven't done that, do that. But um, it's about under a two hour drive to dinosaur Valley state park. So if you rent a car, drive a couple hours, if it's a nice day, really neat place, beautiful park on its own. But then in the riverbed are actual dinosaur footprints, like prehistoric footprints. So you can go and find them. They have a map and you try to, you're just like waiting in the water, looking for them. You find them. You can put your hand in a dinosaur print. It's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah, they had. I remember when I covered that game in '44 up at Fenway. They had, they actually had dinosaurs that were at the game. <laughs> uh, this is a tough stretch now because uh, at Dallas and then in Week 15 at Seattle. I don't know. Do you think there's any chance they stay either like in Dallas or maybe go to Seattle? Well, it's it's a Sunday night game, so you know you're not getting back till Monday morning, and then you're flying out there. Um, God, I guess Saturday you might fly Friday. Um, I'm gonna guess no. It doesn't seem to be a Nick Sirianni thing, although he's big on bonding and connecting. Yeah. So you put the whole team in a hotel for a week, and it's December, which like I, I don't know. I'm sure they could find a place to practice, but it was like it was a lot easier when they did it uh, back in 17, because they were like, all right, we'll go to Southern California right. and have nice weather and practice outside. Uh, you're talking about maybe going to Seattle for a week in December? Could you just stay in Dallas the week? Possibly. Plenty of places in Texas. Practice at SMU? Well, now the problem is they might be using that. <laughs> um. Yeah, but I mean, even that bowl game, it's like in the kind of, I guess they'd be practicing. I don't know if SMU's any good, but there's so many colleges out there. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a thought because it is a lot of travel. It is. I'm guessing, I'm guessing Nick won't do that at that point in the season, but, um, and, you know, and part of the, part of the issues, is you don't have your training facilities out there. You know, you don't have, you don't have your rehab stuff and your, you know, Maybe you can find a, a college that has that stuff, but uh, I'm guessing I'm guessing they come home. Okay, uh, Seattle not a pushover team. Nine and eight made the playoffs last year. In an NFC West, it's a really a, a two horse race. The Cardinals stink, and the Rams are going to stink. So uh, they'll have an opportunity to win some games. I don't know if the Seahawks are a team that's going to like scare you, but going there is tough to play. It's a tough place to play. Yeah, it, it's always it's my favorite stadium. Um, Eagles have lost seven straight against the Seahawks. It's their longest current losing streak um, against any team. They've lost four straight to the Bucks and the Chiefs, so they play all those teams this year. Chance to end some losing streaks. But um, the last time they beat the Seahawks was in 08. Um, Donovan, Donovan touchdown pass to Todd Harriman's. Uh, so it's, uh, they've lost nine of their last ten. Versus the Seahawks, they lost three straight in Seattle. It's uh, when the Seahawks are good, when they're bad, it's just a tough place to play. It's a long trip. Um, it's a really loud stadium, uh, really cool, uh, cool atmosphere in there, cool vibe. Um, you know what's cool? The 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 uh, Mariners Stadium and the and the Seahawks Stadium are connected by a giant parking garage, and so depending on what game you're going to, you just park in the garage, you can go this way. Or you go this way. It's kind of, kind of clever. Remember when we were there? I think it was 
maybe not the last time, but the time before when we got to the entrance and I, I'd lost my credential. <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't happen very well. narrow it down a little bit for me. <laughs> you can walk to the stadium from downtown. So it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a cool atmosphere. What was your place uh, on that trip? So I've done this a couple of times. You can take the train. I'm a big train guy, as you know, you can take the train from downtown Seattle. You can actually walk to the train station from many of the hotels and you take the Cascades train up to Bellingham. It goes to Vancouver, but the last stop in the U.S. in the northwest corner of Washington State is this little coastal town called Bellingham. And it's actually Doug Peterson's hometown. That's where he grew up, which I didn't know the first time I went there. And I'm I'm at I'm at the presser that Monday with a Bellingham like hoodie. And Doug's like, what's that? Well, you take the train right into Bellingham. It's a really cool little town uh, right on the water. Um, it's, it's, a it's got all kinds of, it's got this three mile trail that actually goes out over the water in some places. Um, it's, uh, it's Bellingham Bay. Um, you know, there's mountains and I mean, it's just, it's just such a nice little, um, pocket of this country that you don't get to see. You're, you're only 20 miles South of the Canadian border, uh, British Columbia. Um, and the trains are really cool. They're like, they're not normal Amtrak cars. Like you would take from like, you know, Philly to, um, New York or something. They're like these really like nice restored old trains. And they have like, um, you have like little cabins in there and stuff. And and the views are spectacular on the train. You can drive, it's an easy drive, but if you take the train, just sit back and you go right up the coast and it's just beautiful. If you sit on the right side, see, you see the mountains, um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful ride and there's one train a day up in the morning and one train back, uh, in the evening. So you can't miss your train, but it's, uh, it's one of my favorite places. I love Bellingham and it's like one of the few places I could actually live other than Philly. Love hmm. it. there. Interesting. And I went, you know, it's funny that uh, when I was out there once the, um, Villanova played temple and, um, it was like a noon game. And I just, you know, I found I found some bar that was open and I was the only person in there. It was like some restaurant. Now, I don't even know if they're officially open, but they let me come in. They put Villanova Temple on and I, I just like sat there and like, you know, had lunch and had a local craft IPA and watched Villanova Temple in Bellingham, Washington. It was a cool memory. That's good. Uh, Seattle's a great city. Plenty of stuff to do in town if you don't want to leave town. Uh if you want a little trip, I took the ferry to Bainbridge Island once. Oh, I've done that, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty quick trip. It's like a half-hour ferry ride, and Bainbridge is a really cool little spot. You can walk around, and uh, you don't even have to have anything to do. You just wander around there, and it's it's yeah. a good time. Yeah, there's a little coffee shop I found there, and I, I remember sitting in there. And Is that your I favorite to... coffee shop? It's my, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Man. You're a tough crowd today. It's not my favorite. In fact, our iced tea was awful, but I'm sitting there thinking, this is such a beautiful place. I'm going to drink it anyway. <laughs> uh, and I did. So, All right. Let's, yeah, uh, let's get back to the schedule here. We're, yeah. we're at an hour already. Uh, really? We have three games left. So uh, they come home for two winnable games, you'd think, against the Giants and Cardinals. Giants had a good year. I'm really glad when the host is complaining how long the podcast is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Giants Eagles. Sometimes yes. I, I'm sitting here like people are listening to this. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta you know, uh, Giants on Christmas Day. Boston Scott will be the Grinch that day, maybe for uh, the Giants. Interesting to play on Christmas Day. Hasn't happened since the 2017 season. Uh, not a great game. <laughs> that was the the Nick Foles stinker against the Raiders. But was that 19 to 10 or something like that? Yeah, ugly game. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better than that. Although that did clinch number one seed. Um, as ugly as it was in 17. They've only played Christmas three times in 06. Um, they won a game on Christmas. Um, they beat the Cowboys at old Texas Stadium, Jeff Garcia at quarterback. But um, I'm not crazy about Christmas games. I'm Jewish, so I don't really care a whole lot. I, I just – I don't know. It just kind of – not crazy about it. Yeah, at least it's a home game. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. thing. If you you know, and it's kind of cool because it's it's a, a late afternoon game. So if you're yeah. if you want to go to that game, you can still wake up, do Christmas morning, and then go to the game. You may have tickets under the tree, and you can still make the game. Yeah, that's true. Um, and it's the Giants. Eagles have won um, ten straight or nine straight at no ten straight home games against the Giants. Um, 
I mean, they just don't lose to the Giants. So you like their chances in that one. Uh, and then against the Cardinals, Jonathan Gannon comes to town. That, that Cardinals team is kind of a train wreck. Uh, but Kyler Murray should be healthy, you would think, <laughs> this late in the season. He's probably going to miss the beginning of this season. Like week 17, who knows at that point. Who Anyone could be hurt. But uh, if, if they played the Cardinals early in the season, it's probably a really easy layup. Week 17, at least they, they mind their quarterback back. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I don't think it'll matter. I think they're they're a terrible team. Um, but, um, and we'll see. I mean, who knows if Kyler would be playing at that point. But uh, it, it should be. After, after the way the schedule was from the bye week on, getting Giants, Cards, Giants is – and look, the Giants aren't pushovers, but the Eagles are better than them. So those three games um, gives you a little chance to catch up if you need to make up some ground. Yeah, uh, And then week 18 on the road back uh, to MetLife to face the Giants to be determined date and time for that one. But we'll see if it matters. If it matters, then they'll, they'll put it in a good spot. If not, they'll, they'll have to line it up with everything. Eagles are 12 and 5 in their last 17 games against the Giants in East Rutherford. I mean, 12 and 5 against the Giants up there. Um, so it's a it's a place that they've uh, they've done really well. And then you had a couple wins against the Jets there too. They they just don't lose much in that building. Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, you want to go through wins and losses? Sure. You if don't you, have to. No, if you want, let, let's do it. Okay. Week one at the Patriots. Win. Win. Week two versus the Vikings. Win. Win. Week three at Buccaneers. Win. Win. Week four versus Commanders. Win. Win. 4 0. Oh. We both got them 4 0. Oh. Week five at the Rams. Win. Win. Both got them 5 0. Oh. Week six at the Jets. Oh, it's tempting to go loss there, but win. Loss. This is where we divert a little bit. I just think it's a tough game, and I think they're going to lose one eventually. So, yeah, why not that one? Week seven versus the Dolphins. Win. Win. You got them seven now? Yeah. Week eight at Commanders. Loss. Win. So, we both got them seven and one. Week nine versus the Cowboys. At home, I'll go win. Okay. I will go, uh, I will go ahead and go loss on that one. I just figured they're going to split. No rhyme or reason. By week, they cruise through at Chiefs. Loss. Loss for me as well. Uh, versus Bills. At home, I'm going to go win there. Win? I have a loss there. So you got him with one more win than me right now. Versus the 49ers. Win. Win. Still got him one more win than me. At the Cowboys. Loss. I go win. So we're tied up. At Seahawks. Man, this is a tough schedule. I think they win that game. I have a win there too. Versus the Giants. Win. Win there for me too. Versus the Cardinals. Win. I have a win there as well. So we have them 12 and 4 going into week 18 at the Giants. Loss, because I, I don't think it'll matter. Yeah, that's the same thing I did. I have a loss there, 12 and 5. I think that's probably good enough to win the division. Will it yeah. be a Good enough to take number one seed? Not sure. And I still hate the one team getting to buy, but that's a, that's a issue for another day. Call your buddy Roger. Say, hey, Roger, we worked on that bye week for my birthday. Let's let's figure out this. Uh, he said this just one week. favor per year. Okay, uh, maybe next year you'll you'll get that one done. Work on it. All right, that's it. Uh, we did want to mention we did have a chance to on Thursday speak to. Uh, all three of the Eagles coordinators, we spoke to Sean Desai for the first time. He's a real person. We're not going to get into that on this podcast, but next week we'll kind of break down everything they said, give our impressions uh, of Sean Desai, of Brian Johnson in his new role, and of Michael Clay, who is still here. Really impressed with Sean Desai. I'm, looking I was, forward to that. I'm excited. But we'll talk about him uh, next week. We good? We're good. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. That's it for Rube. I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye. We'll talk to you soon.